So, hey guys, um, again, thank you for coming to this session. Um, you can just fill up your name, if you group one, there's your register. If you group two, there's your register. If you group three, there's your register. Yeah. So, thank you for coming. As you know, today today's session is based on test two preparation, right? So your test two, which is next week. So your test two, which is next week, Wednesday, right? Consists of three chapters. So you've got chapter four, chapter five, and six, right? Okay. So we're going to be doing preparation based on these chapters, right? But we, before we do this test preparation, I just want to go through a bit of chapter 7, which is confident interval, right? The papers we'll be looking at is 20, 2016. Is it semester 2? Is it semester 2? But I know it's test 2. It's on our water group. 2016, test two, semester, semester two, okay, semester two. We'll be looking at this paper. So before we do the test preparation based on these three chapters, I'd like to give you guys a background on what's happening in confident interval, okay? So that's chapter seven. is based on confident <coughs> intervals. Intervals. Right. Confident interval. Okay? So before we do confident interval, I'd like to talk about something. Okay. In everyday life, you put what is known as the population, right? And from the population, you have the sample. You've got the sample. Obviously, population is everything of the same character, right? And the sample is the subset of the population, right? Okay, what is it called? Everything that is calculated based on the population is referred as the parameter, right? You've got parameters here. Right. And everything calculated based on the sample is referred as the statistic. Do you guys still remember? Statistics. Statistic. Right? And this statistic is referred as being the estimate. And this one is referred as being the constant. Right? So the statistic estimates the parameter. Right? Okay. Because, I mean, in, 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 in reality, it is very difficult to know the parameter. So let, let me make an example. Let's say you're owning a business, right? You want to know how many people get into your, your you're owning maybe a shop. You want to know how many people get into your shop in an hour, right? So obviously, you've got, maybe let's say on average, five people get into your shop an hour, right? An hour. This is a statistic. Why is this the statistics? Statistic, because it's being, it, 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 it's, a, it's an estimate, right? That is being calculated based on the sample, right? Whereby maybe you observe five days, right? In five days, in an hour, when you shop, you look how many people will get in into your shop in an hour. Then in five days, you notice that on average, five people get into your shop in an hour, right? From the 
sample. So your sample is five days. It's discrete, obviously, one up until five days. You've got five people, you expect five people to get into your shop, to come into your shop in an hour, right? But your interest, everybody's interest is based on the population. Everybody's interest is based on the population. Because if you know the population, your assumptions will be true all the time, right? So what is, it, what is the population? Let's say you take 365 days, right? In a, in a year, there are 365 days. This is the whole population, right? And it is very difficult each and every day you observe in an hour how many people get into your shop. And you do that every day. It's very difficult, right? Now that's the reality we face in each and every day life. It's very difficult to know the parameter which are, which are things that are calculated based on the population. So you better find the sample and from the sample you find the statistic and this statistic you estimate the parameter, right? How many parameters can you estimate? It's either you estimate your mu, which is average, or your proportion, or your proportion, or your variance. Right. So, let me draw something here. Uh, okay. We're coming to confident interval, right? So on average, you've got five people getting to your shop in one hour, right? In five days, right? Obviously, if you're owning a shop, it will be more interesting to know how many people get into your shop in an hour in the whole year, right? But the, to do that is time consuming and it's expensive. So that's why you always use the sample and from the sample you deduce what is happening in the population, right? Remember, the population is constant. The parameters in the population is, are constant, right? So this will change, the, the statistic changes uh, depending on your sample, right? So that's why it's referred as an estimate, not a constant, okay? So let's say, now obviously you've got the parameter, right? You've got the parameter, which is your mu. You've got your parameter, which is your mu. So this mu is calculated based on the population, right? This mu, for, for the, this example, is the mu that we get from 365 days, right? I mean, it's there, but you don't know it as the owner of the shop, right? But it is there. If you stay in, in your shop in every, every time, in, in an interval of an hour, you calculate people coming into your shop, and I mean, you'll find the answer, right? So it's there, just that you, I mean, maybe you can't calculate it because there are many days, right? So you rather use the sample. Now the question is, how sure are you that your statistic is close to the parameter? That's the question, right? Because you've got the statistic. Obviously you're interested in the, in the, in the parameter, right? So from your statistic, how sure are you that you're close to the one which is the, the parameter? That's where confident interval comes into play, right? You've got what is known as the standard error, right? The standard error is what will tell you how, sure, how close are you from the true parameter. Let's say this one is 10. Let's say the, on average in 365 days, Right, which is the this is the population in 365 days in your shop, 10 people come in in an, in one hour, right? In one hour. So obviously now you you calculate this 
you find that your expectation in an hour is five. Can you see that this is not a cost to this, right? So my question is how, because you, I mean, you don't know this, how sure are you that this is close to this? That's where standard deviation comes into play. Standard deviation, so how sure are you? So, standard error, which is the same as standard deviation, will come into place now. <clears throat> Obviously, you want your standard error to be very small. Why do you want your standard error to be very small? Because the smaller the standard error, it means that the closer you are to the parameter, the actual value, right? So for instance, the, the error that's here is 10 minus 5, right? The answer is 5. This is your error, right? Okay. But let's say you don't know this value. Now, how sure are you? I mean, it was easier in this case because you knew this value. This value, I mean, right? But now, let's say you don't know this value. How sure are you that you're close to the parameter from your statistic? Then you talk of confident intervals, right? Now, obviously, an average will be something in the middle, right? <coughs> So it's here. Right? You choose an interval. So your confident interval, which is this average now, let's say you don't know it, but you know it's a, it's a, it's a parameter which is supposed to be, two, to be in between two points. Right? This point and this point. Okay? Then your, par I mean, let's say you don't know this value. Right? But obviously your interest is all the time to know your population parameter. So if you don't know this value, but you show sure that it must be in between two points, right? You choose an interval. It must be between A and B, right? Remember, under this curve, this area is referred as being 1 minus alpha, right? This middle area, right? So what is this one? If this one is 1 minus alpha, is, is alpha over 2? Why alpha over 2? Okay, the first thing you did was you said 1 minus 1 minus alpha, right? Right, because it's this area and you want to find this end point, right? So what is left here? Alpha. Are we left with alpha, right? But alpha, I mean, alpha is the area under the curve. But alpha is not, is not only for the air, for for this area, but it's for this area and this area, right? Then you divide by two, right? So you've got this area as alpha by two, right? And you've got <coughs> this one also as the same alpha by 2, right? But from here, from this point, right? From this point, your z alpha is 1 minus alpha by 2. Because every time you're interested to the area to the left, your z alpha, you remember everything that's here is being constrained about the area to the left, right? Then this one, it's just z alpha by 2. Right. Okay. Okay, guys. Guys. Am I moving too fast? Okay. You know that your parameter is the number which is close, which is between A, point A, and B. Right? Okay. So let's show you something so nice now now let's look at this this way you've got 1 minus alpha right you've got 1 minus alpha this is the area in between right you want to find this guy right 
1 minus alpha is the first to probability because I mean the area under the curve it's the same as probability, right? Okay, then what else do you have? I mean obviously you've got now your, your mu, let's say your, let's denote it as, as x bar, right? I mean it's, it's one and the, and the same thing, it's average, right? Okay? So you say it is in between these two points, right? So it's z alpha by 2 and z alpha minus alpha by 2, right? Are you guys still with me? Listen, I have a question. How? Can someone answer that? How? I mean, what you need to understand here, okay, do you understand how did I get this one? Yeah? You understand this one, right? So you've got, so the area, this area to the left from here, from this point, the area to the left, you'll get it with one, minus alpha by 2, right? You're always interested in the area to the left, right? Okay, so this one, now this one, this area now, how can you get this area? This area is just alpha by 2, and this area is being constrained about this point, right? So it's just alpha by 2, which is this area, right? But this area here, it's 1 minus alpha by 2. Am I making sense? Yeah? Okay, 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 so you want to find that this is the parameter now, this is this guy, okay, so from here you've got 1 minus alpha is equal to probability of z alpha by 2 less than, I mean obviously you don't have tables based on x bar, what do you have? Z table, right? So you standardize your x bar for for this average that you're looking for to be under the standard normal cap, right? So how do you do that? You say x bar minus mu, right? Divided by I mean it, it is your average, right? Okay. So your z alpha 1 minus, yeah, 1 minus alpha by 2, right? What are you interested on? Is this, right? So make this the subject of the formula from this. So you've got 1 minus alpha is equal to probability of z alpha by 2 times square root of n, right? Hmm? You're left with? x bar minus mu, z, 1 minus alpha by 2, times square root of n. Right? I multiplied both sides with this standard error. Right? Right? Okay. So, but you're interested in this, x bar. So, this is the same as, okay, let me write here. So, you've got 1 <coughs> minus alpha is equal to probability of z alpha by 2 <coughs> times the standard error, right? Which is the same as the standard deviation. z1 minus alpha by 2. Right, right? But you're interested in this guy, okay? So what do you do? 1 minus alpha, <coughs> z alpha by 2, square root n, x bar minus, it's less than, sorry, plus mu, it's less than x bar, over, less than z, 1 over 2, standard error, plus, New. <coughs> right. <coughs> Are we on the same page? Eh? Yeah? No. 
Okay, what you don't understand. Okay? Okay, I'll explain some things just now. Or else, okay, if, you, if you've got your x bar and you're looking for mu, then you transpose mu this side, I mean x bar this side, then x bar that side, right? In fact, that's the case. Okay, I mean, this is for, this is the sample average. which is like the one you've got here, right? This is your sample average. And remember, you're always interested in the parameter. This is for the population average, right? So obviously, if you're looking for the population average, then you transpose x bar this side, um, less than mu, and x bar this side, minus. No, minus now, minus but if you left with minus mu, right? If you left with minus mu, then you're gonna have the prob probability of x bar, x bar is minus z alpha by two square root of n, right? So then less than your mu, which is positive now, you divide, all the sides with the negative, right? So less than, uh, then we've got again x bar <coughs> minus your z alpha by 2 square root of n, right? Yeah. So now let me come back to this example. You knew, let's say you knew that your mu is 10, right? In an 365 days, you're owning a shop, you want to know how many people get into your shop in 365 days, that's a year, right? Then, I mean, that's the whole population, okay? So out of that, you notice that on average, 10 people get into your shop an hour in 365 days. Let's say you know that, right? Then come, maybe, maybe you die. Say you die, then your kid owns the shop now. If your kid owns the shop, and he's, he's like, he, he doesn't have 365 days to watch people coming in and out in the shop. So he'll rather just use five days, right? So in this five days, you only notice that on average, uh, uh, five people get into your shop in an hour. But you did, right? But you, I mean, you knew that on, on, in a whole year, on average, you expect 10 people to get into your shop, right? Let's say you, 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 your kid now knows that your expectation was 10, right? So the error between 10 and 5 is 5, which is okay, right? But let's say you did not tell your kid, right? If you did not tell your kid, then your kid will only understand that the average, the expectation that you had was between these two values, your z alpha by 2 and z alpha 1 minus uh, alpha by 2, right? So as you can see here, this is, so from, if, if your kid knew your standard error was 5, right? But in most cases, you don't know the standard error. So how sure are you, in this case, your kid, how sure was your kid how, that he is close to the a parameter of the population, he had the standard deviation, the standard error of 5, that's fine. But if he doesn't know the standard error, this is the error, right? This is the error. Okay, then from here you've got your confident interval. Your confident interval is x bar plus or minus z alpha square root of times z in. Right. All this comes from this. Now, how sure are you? you this sure. I mean, this is probability. Right? You are 1 minus alpha sure that your parameter, which is your average in this case, is 1 minus alpha. Right? I'll make an example. I'll make 
an example. Don't worry. Um, okay, this is chapter 7, right? So everything in chapter 7, all these that you see on your formulas and stuff come from this background, right? Your, I mean, obviously, you've got your, your confident interval for, for what? Proportions, you've got your, you can find your confident interval based on your, your variance, right? So all that comes from this background. But you'll we'll get into this even more uh, the next time I see you guys. Okay? Okay, we'll come back to this later on. Now let's focus on our test preparation. Can I erase here? <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, please open up the 2016 test 2 semester 2. Okay. Let's talk of chapter 4. I love chapter 4. Uh, Let's talk of chapter 4, right? Chapter 4 is based on discrete. Discrete variables. It's based on discrete variables. What are discrete variables? Discrete variables are countable variables. Which are referred as being finite. Right? Now, from the paper that we're looking at, um, obviously, if you talk of chapter 4, chapter 4 is under three divisions, which is, I mean, we're looking at basic statistics. We're also looking at probability distributions. Right? We're also looking at approximations. Right. So from that paper, 2016, semester 2, test 2, where does chapter 4 start? From question? Eh? Which question? Question 1. <laughs> okay. So, Start from question one. Why question one? Why question one? Because is question one based on basic statistics? No, yes? Okay, let me give you a background of what's happening under basic statistics. If something is referred as being basic statistics, this is where you're given random variables. You're given random variables, which obviously are, are countable, are discrete. And under these random variables, you're being told about probabilities, right? These probabilities must sum up to 1, right? This probability of xi must sum up to 1, right? Why is it summing up to 1? It's summing up to 1 because your random variables, these are all possible outcomes, right? These random variables they're giving you. For example, if you take a die, a die, how many outcomes does a die have? Six. One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? These are all possible outcomes from a die, right? Now, out of these possible outcomes, you're given probabilities, right? These probabilities that you're given here must sum up to 1. Why must they, they sum up to 1? Firstly, what do you understand about the probability which is 1? If your probability is 1, it means that no doubt that outcome will okay, right? So when rolling a die, the reason we're summing every, every probability and getting 1 is because an outcome will okay if you roll, if you do this experiment of rolling a die, right? It's either you get a 1 or a 2 or a 3 or a 4 or a 5. 
or a six, right? Can you get a seven? No. No, right? Why? Because a seven is not an outcome. Okay. So it's question one based on chapter uh, chapter four. Yes. And it's based on chapter four. Where about chapter four? Basic statistics. How do you see that? What are you given? You're given, you're given random variables, along these random variables, you're given probabilities, right? To this probability, you're given sum up to one. Okay, then what's the question? Expect. It's an expectation, right? Under basic statistics, the expectation is x is equal to xi is equal to the summation of probability of x is equal to xi xi times the probability right so are we okay with question one question two what's happening in question two every time you see a question you ask yourself what chapter is this question from are we still in chapter four we are about in chapter 4. Probability? Is it probability distribution? Really? Okay, if it's probability distribution, we are about probability distribution. Binomial distribution. So you guys are telling me that you're given probability of success and n. Okay? Um, then what is your probability? 0, 0, 0,25. What is your sample? 15. Okay, your n is 15. So I do agree you did it with binomial distribution. Now, what is binomial distribution? Binomial distribution is a type of distribution whereby you're given discrete variables, obviously in chapter 4, which are countable variables, which discountable variables are referred as being finite. So the probability, if, if all these 15 discrete variables have the same probability of success, then you're talking of binomial distribution. That's what binomial distribution is, right? For instance, this does not fall under basic statistics. Why? It's because, I mean, never mind the fact that you're given a table where you're given random numbers, which are all the outcomes in the, in the experiment and you give the probability. But the fact that every outcome here have the same probability of success, this is binomially distributed. Right? What else is binomially distributed? A coin. A coin is binomially distributed. Why? Because every outcome in a coin has the same probability of success. Right? Okay. Right. Uh, is this probability of success? Why? Because the question under this is referring to this probability. So this is the probability of success, right? What is the question? Eh? Yeah. There will be four. There will be four. So this is the probability based on equality. Do you all agree? Okay, so the probability that x is equal to 4 then. Then if you're being asked to find the probability based on the equality, what do you use? PDF. Which PDF? Binomial distribution PDF, right? Which is? Uh, okay, n minus xi. Right? So this is the PDF under binomial distribution. Remember, the same PDF will be on the formula sheet on Tuesday or Wednesday. What's the next question? What's the next question? Are you still in chapter 4? Yes. We're about in chapter 4. Still in binomial distribution? Yes. Okay. Is this still the probability of success? Okay, so what's the question now? The probability of at least, can you borrow me at least 10 rand? So this is x greater than, right? What? Six, right? I mean, you understand, if you're talking of things that are discrete, this is one minus probability of x less than equal to five. 
right? Okay? I mean, why do you need to change this? It's because the tables you have give you the area to the left. This is not the general formula. This is not the general formula. You were going to use the table, I mean, let's say they give you guys tables with the error to the right. For this, you were going to go straight to the tables, right? But because you've got tables with the error to the left, that's why you change this and make it to be on the left side. How do you change it? By saying 1 minus the probability of x less than or equal to 5. Okay? Then, how can we find this? Let's find this then. Find this. Are you signing? If you group three, you've got your own uh, register. Group two, your own register. Group one, your own register. Please sign. Okay, what's the answer here? One minus zero comma? Eight five. One six, like this? Yes. Okay, from here, I mean, I think it's easy. Who doesn't understand? Who says the fast? Okay, let's move on. The next question is, question? Four. Remember guys, I like the energy you have, and I mean, my wish is for you guys to finish the state paper and get like 75 and above, right? So you need to, make sure that you don't run out of time. So be quick with questions. Okay, um, what else? Question five, four. Four. Are you still in chapter four? Yes. We are about in chapter four. Probability distribution. Under which distribution? Hyper, hyper, what's happening? Poisson, Poisson. <laughs> You know why I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical? It's because, listen guys, if you look at your workbook, right? Your notes. If you're being taught, they start with parameter distribution, right? What follows it, Poisson distribution, right? Then, hypergeometric distribution. So obviously, guys, you don't juggle around questions. I mean, I can't ask you parameter distribution and jump to hypergeometric distribution without asking you Poisson distribution, right? Okay, so you say you guys are in hypergeometric distribution. No. Poisson. Poisson, how do you see? Okay, you're given an average of five. Wow, lucky number five. And what's your constraint? Pair day. day. Okay, pair day, right? So obviously, the discrete part comes from the fact that you're talking of days. And days are discrete, and days are countable, days are, from, days are finite. There are 365 days, you know where they start and where they end, right? So that's chapter 4. We are about in chapter 4, probability distributions under Poisson distribution. What is the question? In? 10? Calculate the probability that the firm receive 10 complaints over 48 hours, right? So what are you given? You're given five complaints. I mean, obviously the rate is the same as the average. Wow, that's a tiny. Complaints about the internet, brokerage firm, okay, it's the rate of five per day. So they're asking you 10 complaints, right? 10 complaints in 48 hours, which is two days, right? So two days. Now what is the probability? Firstly, are you being asked to find the probability based on equality or inequality? Inequality. Really? Okay. So the probability of x is equal to 10, right? But now you only have this average is only for one day, but the question is based on two days, right? So what is your mu then? 10 also. Okay. Happy with that? I mean, someone else would have converted per day to 24 hours, right? And used 48 hours. I'm fine with that. Okay. So, what is the probability then? It's E minus your mu, which is 10 
and you've got here your mu also, which is 10 raised to 10, which is your x, right? Divided by your by 10. Is it like this? Okay, what's the next question? <laughs> what is the which of the following is not the valid PDF? Oh, question five. Calculate the probability that the firm receive not more than. Okay, you're still in Poisson distribution. What is not more than? It's a inequality. Not more. Can you borrow me not more than ten rand? What do I mean? Less than 10 rand. So this is the probability of x less than what's there? Huh? 10. 3. Not more than, it's less than or equal to. Right? 3. Is it 3? Yes. So what do you do then? Is the question based on inequality? What do I do? I use tables. Right? Now, in the mu that you give in of 1j, is it the same mu that you're going to use here? No. What mu are you going to use now? 12 hours. 12 hours now. Okay, so you've got 24 hours, that's per day, 12 hours, then what's the correct mu you're going to use? 2. 2.5. 2.5. 2 2.5. So you use your table. Oh no, 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 so it's on the table. Okay, so let's go to question. So, which of the following is not the valid PDF or PMF? Okay, which one? Yes, right? E is the CDF. Right, okay, then let's go to the next question. <laughs> Question 7. Question 7, are you still on chapter 4? Yeah. Yeah. Eh? Yes. Yes. You're still on chapter 4. Yes. We are about in chapter 4. Hypergeometric distribution, right? How do you see? How do you see that you're dealing with hypergeometric distribution? You're given the population, and from the population, you're being told about multiple samples, right? So what is your population? 20. Eh? 20. What is your N1? What is your first sample? 5. What is your N2? Eh? 15. Obviously, because 5 plus 15 is 20, right? Remember, Remember, the population and things of the same character, right? Right? Let me give you a nice example here. If I tell you that I've got, I've got uh, 10 people, I've got 10 people, right? And 10 animals, right? What is my population? My population is not 20. Right? Because this 20 is made up of two things which are not of the same character. Right? You've got cats here, I mean, you've got animals, you also have people. Population are things of the same character. Right? Okay. So, how do you get 15? That's what you're asking. You're fine now. Okay, what's the question then? What is the question? Only one. The nine cooks. The nine cooks. N1 is the nine cooks. It's five for the nine cooks. So these guys are nine cooks. I'm also a nine cook. Fifteen is these are cooking guys, right? These are cooking guys. Cooking. So what what are you asking me? You're asking me to find the probability that only one. Only is this the question based on inequality or equality? Equality. Really? So equal to one. Right? How many are you selecting? Three. 
Tell you the truth. Okay? So the probability that x is equal to 1, remember your x is only interested in the non codes, right? So you open in two brackets, this nice big brackets, why? Because we've got two samples, right? If you had more than two samples, there are going to be three years, or four, or n times, right? <laughs> Divided by this. Okay? So you've got 5, you've got 15, right? So what is the probability that you select only one non cook out of three, right? You select only one non cook out of three. So obviously, at the end of the day, you want to you have three guys. So you select two from this side, right? Then five plus 15, 20, one plus two, three. So from here, you good? Okay, what's the next question? I can't even have both table. What's the next question? Question 17. Uh, okay, the average time taken for complete population is this, the variance is this, and this is easy. Um, oh, okay, no, I like, I like 17. Okay, so every time, guys, we're almost done, no worries. We're almost mm -hmm. done. So, every time in chapter 5 and 6 and you're being asked to find how many, the question is how many, what do you need to understand? The formula you need to use is probability of times your population, right? Is equal to n. The how many parts comes this? We want you to find that sample, right? Right. So it's n times probability times the population. Okay? So let's let's answer question seven uh, seven e. So what is the you given your average as what is your average? What is your average? One nine five. One nine five. Then your variance or your standard deviation? Yes? 55, right? I mean, every time, guys, we've got, in reality, every time we've got your average, we need, you need to tell us about your error to take you seriously. Um, then, then uh, what if you're being asked how many, right? If I'm being asked how many, the first thing I do is this, right? Then what's the probability they're asking for? How many would you expect to finish in more than, right? So you want me to find x which is more than? 2, 4, 5. Two, four, five like this. Okay? Time, what is your n? 1, it's 1,000. Okay? It's 1,000. So what do you do under chapter 5 and 6 to find this? You go to the tables, you standardize, you go to the tables, right? So from there, you multiply by 1,000. Then you get your answer. What is important here is every time you're being asked a question, how many? Right? 